Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the rotation in R2. So let's see what we mean by that. If you have a vector in R2 and uh, I have that vector here for you, let's call that vector V. So if we write the components X and Y, and we know it's in R2. So, but we know that the X component can be written as R cosine alpha, and then the Y component here can be written as R sine alpha. Basically, we can write X, Y, the component equals to substitute by R cosine alpha and R sine alpha, X component and the Y component of the vector. Now, if we take that vector and rotate it counterclockwise, so we take that vector and then rotate it counterclockwise, we get this new vector Q. And that angle is theta. So now if you write, if I write <coughs> vector U here or rotation of V <coughs> with respect to theta, sorry. So we know this angle, the new angle here is alpha plus plus theta. So the X component here, the new X component becomes R times cosine alpha plus theta. And the new Y component here becomes R sine of alpha plus theta. So let's write that in matrix notation. So we can say R cosine alpha plus theta, R sine alpha plus theta equals to, however, from trigonometry, we know that sine, I put the note here for you, sine A plus B, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B, and cosine A plus B is cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B. Let's apply that here. So cosine, we can factor out R, cosine alpha plus theta can be written as cosine alpha cosine theta minus sine alpha sine theta and sine alpha plus theta can be written as sine alpha cosine theta and cosine alpha sine theta. Now what we can do here, let's just arrange those a little bit nicely. So we can uh, just put our cosine alpha, the original X and Y, which was, that was the X component, our cosine alpha, let's put those in parentheses. And from here, we can uh, write this as sine theta times R sine alpha. One more time, we can distribute the R in uh, both cases. Then we can write that first. So, but we have our R, again, if you multiply R and then you just put R cosine alpha inside the parentheses and R sine alpha inside the parentheses here. So basically these are the same thing, just arranged in a way and you'll see why we're doing this. One more time, this was our X, and this was our Y, and this was our X, and this was our Y. So let's see what we get. We can take this matrix and write that as a matrix multiplication. So we can have cosine theta from here, negative sine theta from here. Then we have sine theta, sine theta here. And we have cosine theta here. If we multiply that by this matrix, R cosine alpha and R sine alpha, we're gonna get the same matrix we have here. So. And if you want to double check the size of the matrices, this is two by two, and this one is two by one, and that's going to give us a two by one matrix, <clears throat> which is that one. Now, what we can do, as I mentioned, R cosine alpha is just X, and R sine alpha is just Y here. So we can substitute those by X and Y. So now we get the rotation matrix. Sometimes you see this notation, which is cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta and cosine theta. 
And let's see if I do an example, you'll see how that works. If you have any vector in R2, and I did pick the vector with components five and one, and let's say theta is 90 degrees because it's gonna be easier to see or pi over two. So we write <clears throat> the node rotation matrix that becomes cosine pi over two minus sine pi over two, sine pi over two and cosine pi over two. Cosine pi over two is zero, negative sine pi over two, sine pi over two is one, so that becomes negative one, sine pi over two is one, and cosine pi over two, cosine pi over two is zero. If we take that matrix right here and multiply it by the given vector in the example, and so zero times five, is zero minus uh, one times one is one, so you get negative one. And one times five is five, zero times one is zero, so you get five. So our new vector u here is negative five and one. So, and that's this vector. So we started with that vector. When you multiply by the rotation matrix, you get that vector and our goal was to rotate this vector 90 degrees uh, clockwise. And that's what that, uh, that's a transformation. It is a linear transformation because we're involving a matrix. And always when you take a vector and multiply it by a matrix, that what happens to that vector, in this case, it's rotated. So there are matrices they can uh, make the vector longer or uh, just project it. And these are all matrices of examples of linear transformation. Did, uh, I think that's it uh, for this video. One more time, please watch it two, three times and know for sure how to the proof comes uh, for the rotation matrix. We also have the rotation matrix in R3 also uh, two. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Have a great one, everyone.